Dear students, welcome to Microbio Solutions. Today, we are going to discuss about the basic staining technique used in microbiology laboratory, that is gram staining. So we will just see some introduction about gram staining. The basic classification of bacteria is based on the cell wall structure. And based on the cell wall structure, the bacteria have been classified into gram-positive and gram-negative. So the main idea of gram staining is to differentiate or gram staining, we can say it is a differential staining technique that provides an easy differentiation between the bacteria that is into gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria based on the structure of cell wall. The staining technique was developed in the late 1700s by a scientist called Christine Graham who classified the rigid cell wall bacteria into one of the two groups as we have told earlier based on their ability to resist the decolorization action of an alcoholic solution. So we use a decolorizing alcohol in this differential staining technique and Christine Graham has classified the bacterium based on the ability of the bacterium or based on the ability of the cell wall of the bacterium to resist this decolorization with alcohol. So those resist the decolorization by alcohol that is 95 per percentage of ethanol are arbitrarily termed as gram positive and those does not resist the decolorization with the alcohol are classified into gram negative. So finally, according to Christian Graham, the bacteria which possess rigid cell wall and resist the decolorization with 95% ethanol are termed as gram positive and those does not resist the decolorization are termed as gram negative bacteria. The terms positive and negative have nothing to do with charges though we say gram positive and gram negative of the cell but based on the differences in the cell wall structure of these two groups of bacteria. The characteristic compound found in all true bacterial cell wall is a peptidoglycan that is the mandatory cell wall component present across all true bacterial cells. And the amount of peptidoglycan is among one of the differences between gram positive as well as gram negative cell wall. So the amount of peptidoglycan that is present in the gram positive and the gram negative cell wall varies. That is the difference that is how we will differentiate the gram positive as well as gram negative cell wall in one way. And in this slide we can see the various differentiating features of gram positive and gram negative cell walls as we have told one of the compound of a cell wall is a peptidoglycan layer in a gram positive cell wall the peptidoglycan is a thick layer whereas when you see a gram negative cell wall it is a thin peptidoglycan 90 percentage of cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan in a gram positive cell wall wherein it is only 5 to 10 percentage in a gram negative cell wall. And the another component that is present in a gram positive cell wall is ticoic acid, wherein a gram negative cell wall lacks ticoic acid. And the gram positive cell wall does not have many polysaccharides, but the gram negative cell wall has outer membrane. So the outer membrane of gram negative cell wall are made up of lipids and polysaccharides. So in this picture it shows us the gram positive cell wall as well as the gram negative cell wall. You can see the different layers in a gram positive as well as gram negative cell wall. There is a thick peptidoglycan layer followed by a ticoic acid and lipoticoic acid and then that a plasma membrane and protein. This is the structure of a 
gram positive cell wall peptidoglycan lipoticoic acid and ticoic acid constitutes the cell wall of gram positive bacteria wherein this is a cell wall of gram negative bacteria where you can see a thin peptidoglycan layer and an outer membrane which is made up of lipoproteins and phospholipids there are also enzymes and other active substances present in the cell wall of gram negative bacteria so the process of differential gram staining includes four basic dyes that is a primary stain that is a crystal violet and the secondarily we use a modern that is also termed as a helper which helps the primary stain to bind to the cell wall the modern that we use is an iodine solution or we can either call it as a grams iodine and the third reagent is a decolorizer that is 95 percentage ethanol followed by that our last stain or we can also call it as a counter stain that is sephranin or neutral red can also be used so in this picture you can see the process of gram staining first picture shows that the smear on a glass light upon this you are putting your crystal violet dye that is your primary stain followed by the iodine which is your secondary chemical or a modern which helps the primary stain to bind to the cell wall of the bacteria and after the primary and secondary stain you have to do a alcohol wash that is also called as decolorization to find out which bacterium resists the decolorization by alcohol and which bacterium does not resist the decolorization with alcohol and after decolorization we will be directly going to the counter staining part that is the application of sephranin or neutral red at the end of the staining you will be able to visualize the bacterium present on the smear or present on the sample like this in this picture if it is a gram positive bacteria you can see a purple colored structure and if it is a gram negative bacterium you can see a pink colored structure as you can clearly see in this picture so we will move on to the detailed procedure of gram staining on the right hand side you are seeing the images as you are seeing it on a plain smear so consider the first oval shaped structure as your smear plain smear and upon this you are going to add your primary stain that is crystal violet so flood the slide with crystal violet and let it stain for 1 minute so leave the stain over the smear for 1 minute and after the 1 minute drain off that crystal violet and rinse the sample or rinse the glass slide with distilled water once you finish rinsing your slide with distilled water flood the slide with a modern that is grams iodine again for 1 minute keep it undisturbed and at the end of the 1 minute rinse of the grams iodine with distilled water after the secondary step you're going to decolorize the smear with 95% alcohol or ethanol so this step you will have to be very careful you have to hold the slide at an angle preferably with a cloth pen if it is not available you can either use your thumb and index finger to hold the slide and drop 95% of ethanol onto the slide until the alcohol leaving the slide no longer it has a purple tint and be sure to drop the alcohol onto the upper portion of the slide so that the smears are subjected to uniform decolorization what happens if you directly pour the alcohol onto the smear the smear won't be uniformly decolorized and you will not be able to appreciate a clear gram positive and gram negative 
bacterium at the end of your staining technique. So after decolorization, again rinse the smear with distilled water and flood the slide with saffronin that is your counter stain. Allow it to stain for 1 to 2 minutes or it can either 2 to 3 minutes. After the preferred time, rinse the slide with distilled water and blow dry the glass slide and you can observe the smear under oil immersion objective that is 100x of a light microscope. So this is how you will see the gram stain structure. So if it is a gram positive bacterium, before you stain it with crystal violet, it will not be having any color. And once you stain with crystal violet, it retains the color. So you can see if it is a gram positive, it is resisting the decolorization with alcohol, ethyl alcohol after you finish your decolorization if it is a gram positive bacterium and at the end of the staining though you have stained it with safranin since it has a thick peptidoglycan and it has already taken the color of crystal violet and also it resisted the decolorization with alcohol it will retain the color of primary stain that is crystal violet and it will stay as purple in color. So you can see in this picture gram positive bacterium will stay in purple color. So in the next picture next you can see the first will be without any stain that is the plain smear is colorless and after the addition of crystal violet and grams iodine it is still has the color of primary stain that is purple in color of crystal violet. But since it is a gram negative bacterium and which has very thin peptidoglycan layer, once you have decolorized, it cannot resist the decolorization. So the bacterium washed the primary stain with what we have applied. So the primary stain is washed away and when we stain with the counter stain, it retains the color of the counter stain and it is seen as pink. So that is how gram negative bacteria will retain the pink color and gram positive bacteria retains the purple color. So the crucial step in the staining process is the decolorizing step and you have to be very alert when you are doing this decolorization. And the most accepted theory about this rationale for the gram staining process is the one proposed by a scientist called Salton. So this theory relies on the fact that the peptidoglycan layer found in the cell wall and the stain molecules are trapped within many layers of this gram positive cell wall. As we have seen, the peptidoglycan layer of gram-positive bacterium is thick. Okay? And Salton has proposed that the peptidoglycan layer is thick and the stain molecules will be trapped inside this peptidoglycan layer in a gram-positive cell wall. And after the addition of the iodine, that acts as a mordant which will form a complex with the mordant iodine molecules. Since the gram negative cell walls lack much of the peptidoglycan, the amount of stain captured in the cell wall is much lesser when compared to the gram positive cell wall. So when the cells are treated with the decolorizer that is 95% ethyl alcohol, this causes the denaturation of the proteins in the outer membrane of gram negative cell walls. This will result in forming holes in the cell wall. So when there is holes produced in the cell wall which will lead to the removal of the primary stain modern complex that is crystal violet iodine complexes will be removed through this gaps from the gram negative cell wall and which leaves these cells 
unstained. So the counter stain, safranin, this is used to make the cell wall visible. And there are four conditions to be followed for a valid ground staining. That is, the culture that we are using for a staining should be young, must be young within 18 to 24 hours old. And the why? Because the older cultures may lose their gram staining properties due to the changes in cell wall as the cells get older. There may be gram variability if we use older cultures. And thin smear, thicker or uneven smears will result in uneven staining and decolorization, which will again be a problem while reporting your smears. So use thin smears always and use fresh reagents of proper strength. Before staining, make sure that your reagents are fresh and not expired. Always run a control, quality controlled cultures when you are doing a gram staining techniques for a non-gram positive bacterium and non-gram negative bacterium. So as a gram positive quality control, Staphylococcus aureus ATCC strains are used and gram negative E. coli ATCC strains are being used. So in this picture, you can see the gram stain slides of certain bacterium that is Neisseria, Streptococcus and Pseudomonas species. This is a gram positive cocci. This is again a gram positive cocci. You can make out the difference between these two. So the arrangement of this bacterium. This bacteria is arranged differently and this is arranged in chains. Wherein the final one is a Pseudomonas species. This is a gram negative bacteria. So these two are purple in color since they are gram positive and this is pink in color as it is a gram negative bacteria. That is about today's class. Thank you.